Hi there, Kathy Coyle representing the Becker County History Science and Children's Museum. And we're gonna find out about the history and the science of Bucks Mill. That's where we are, just south of Lake Melissa today. You can check out this book at the uh, museum and uh, it tells the history of Bucks Mill. In 1891, there were 4,000 passengers making a round trip from Detroit Lakes on out here to Shoreham and then on to Bucks Mill. It was a thriving area, but today I'm just, I'm dressed up in my mosquito and wood tick gear because that's about what all is out here now. It's a pretty quiet place, good place to fish, but that's about it. But uh, John West, you know, the entrepreneur that wanted tourism to be really, really famous nationally in Detroit Lakes, wanted the um, steamboat to be able to go all the way from Detroit Lakes to Pelican River or Pelican Lake. But this dam was in the way. So it's, it's quite a story. And we're gonna find out today why all of this is going to change. The history is going to be history because science has now proven that the dam should not be here. Nick, I heard your presentation at the Lake Melissa Sally Association um, annual meeting. It was so interesting about why Bucks Mill will no longer have this dam. What's behind it all? Well, thanks for the question and thanks for meeting us out here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really exciting large scale project where we're trying to reconnect the entirety of the Pelican River. And part of the reason for that is uh, dams like this, although useful in the 30s uh, Dust Bowl era for lake level control, and then previously dams like that one back there hmm. uh, that were useful for mill development, kind of during the colonization of this part of the country, mm -hmm. um, they've outlived their usefulness, but the structures still remain and they block fish movement, they block nutrient movement throughout the river, mm -hmm. and they also have impacts on how the river functions just physically, the physics of water. Mm -hmm. So if we can remove this and restore uh, that natural function, really it's a benefit not just to the local community, but to the watershed as a whole. Mm -hmm. So this is part of that greater effort, not only within the Pelican River, but also within the Otter Tail River and the Red River Basin as a whole. So this will be multiplied, this, this idea that we're seeing here at Bucks Mill, it will be repeated in many, many locations in, in our area. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we've been doing this work since the mid-90s, uh, starting on the Red River itself, mm -hmm. and we have all of those removed, uh, with the exception of Drayton Dam. Uh, up by Drayton, North Dakota. That's the last one before we would cross into Canada. And that will go to construction uh, this fall, uh, being modified for fish passage. Mm -hmm. And over the entire Red River Basin as a whole, of the 77 structures that are similar to this, mm -hmm. uh, 40 of those have now been modified or replaced for fish passage. Mm -hmm. And an additional six of those will be happening uh, within the next three to five years, of which we hope this to be one of them. Okay, what will this look like in the future? Because uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one when I was a kid walking across this dam up above here. It was kind of thrilling to be above the water. People mm -hmm. gravitate toward flowing water. Yeah. And it can be a real community asset. And that's what the goal of this type of project is. We replace something that, you know, clearly is a bit of a hazard. You can see the sign here right behind us. And we replace it with something analogous to Dunton Locks County Park, where instead of the water presenting itself over a concrete dam, instead it gently steps down from rock riffle to rock riffle to rock riffle. Mm -hmm. And that has multiple benefits. It slows the water down. It's more visually appealing and that slow, visually appealing water is also very appealing to fish. Some people got excited thinking that this would make a difference to the lake levels. Would you address that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've, 
like I said, we've been doing this throughout the Red River Basin. Uh, we have 40 of these complete, and that's only 20% of Minnesota. Uh, we have a specialist crew uh, called the River Ecology Unit. Uh, they're out of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and they specialize in helping engineering firms design these structures. So when we design these, they're very well understood and we do not have any uh, impacts on the upstream lake levels because number one, well, just from a good neighbor standpoint, we don't want to have an impact on people's homes, their cabins, their recreation, what have you. Um, but there's also legal ramifications. Uh, we cannot alter the runout elevation of a given lake and you know, obviously we just don't do that. Mm -hmm. Another exciting part of this, besides those great big fish, is the idea of having a nice park here. Now, that's not under your jurisdiction, it's the county, but what will that be like right across the, the, the water here? Yeah, so the way that that works is uh, with any of these large projects, uh, there are multiple moving pieces. Uh, the DNR helps advise and helps with the grant writing for this, and then we have a local sponsor, in this case the Pelican River Watershed District. They in turn have worked with Becker County, who will be the ultimate owner and operator of the park. And the overall vision is for this area that you see right behind us here mm -hmm. to eventually one day be very similar to say Dunton Locks County Park with this dam no longer here and the Rock Arch Rapids starting just right over by those cattails over there. Mm -hmm. How soon will the dam be out and the rocks will be in? Uh, with the way that the funding mechanisms here work, we have two years before funding would even be available. And that's a competitive process, so there's no guarantee. Um, after that, you typically have one year of engineering and various regulatory things and then we like to build these in the winter um, just because flows are lower, the ground is frozen so it's easy to move equipment and we don't have much impact on the surrounding landscape. Mm -hmm. um, so that gets you to three and a half years mm -hmm. at the very earliest. Okay. So this is a very large, very slow moving process and there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for local folks like yourself mm -hmm. to get involved and become knowledgeable about what's envisioned. Speaking of, you're going to give a tour to the Lake Association folks who, who dare to come out here with the wood ticks and the poison ivy and the mosquitoes. <laughs> we'll see how many people show up. But so this project at the earliest would be 2023, 24. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll know all about it. Once we see it, we'll say, I remember. We know the history. The history was that the steamboats would come out here and uh, thousands of people, as many as 4,000 people. This was a really hopping area with the sawmill and the whole bit. Yeah, so if we rotate slightly here, what you see here, this entire bank, used to be the actual undershot dam of Bucks Mill Dam mm. and the village of Bucks Mill. Ah. And that mill originally was a grain mill uh, grinding flour and then in later years after it outlived that usefulness with the coming of the rail and things like that it became power for a barrel stave factory mm. uh, the wooden slats that they made storage barrels out of huh. and then of course you can't escape the history at this site of the pelican river navigation company uh, the remnants of the lock are right behind us here uh -huh. now an interesting note about that lock um, you know even though it's a really neat piece of local history um, unfortunately, over the past several years, it's suffered some severe structural degradation mm -hmm. to the point that now it's almost becoming a bit of a public safety nuisance. Yeah. And we certainly don't want anyone to get hurt on that structure. And it's already happened. There have been some yes. tragedies here already. There have been. Mm -hmm. And so as part of this project, uh, we hope to remove that and just make the site more appealing, safer, but by the same token, we also want to preserve that local history. So if you think of the informational signs at, say, Dunton Locks and other sites where we've done this, mm -hmm. that actually bring that history forward for the public, okay. because not many people know about this. I mean, you and I do, mm -hmm. but say some new residents to the area might not be familiar. Sure. 
we can educate them about the neat history of the area in which they live while also enhancing the site. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay. I appreciate it.